Good evening and welcome to the April 24th public meeting to discuss the City of Imperial Beach Local Coastal Program update. The purpose of this presentation is to provide an overview to those of you who may be new to the program and also to provide more details on recent edits to participants who have been following it closely. A local coastal program is a plan to guide development in the coastal zone in partnership with the Coastal Commission. It consists of a land use plan called an LUP and an implementation plan called an IP. The land use plan specifies the location, type, and scale of uses of land and water. The IP ensures that the objectives of the land use plan are achieved. In Imperial Beach, the local coastal program is also a general plan update. The update was designed to prepare the general plan amendments and a, and a new climate action plan or CAP to meet state law requirements to help guide investment and to increase future funding potential to the city. Overall, we're intending to meet local goals and look for opportunities to advance Imperial Beach's mission statement. This program is not a rezoning, it is not an intensification of land use, and we are not proposing managed retreat as a sea level rise strategy. The update does set the overall community vision and purpose. We are doing this to help achieve multiple city goals for a healthy and strong environment, economy, and community, and to improve resiliency to sea level rise and other changing conditions. The local coastal program includes five major components. That includes the general plan, land use plan. It includes amendments to the zoning ordinance to form the LCP implementation plan. It includes a sea level rise checklist and extensive monitoring program as the key strategy to build resiliency to sea level rise. The program includes a climate action plan that is actually not a part of the local coastal program, but is an important part of the city's desire to increase its sustainability and to meet state law requirements. All of these actions will be are being reviewed through an environmental document that the city will adopt. Outreach has been an important component of this project from the very beginning. We've gotten input from a steering committee and stakeholder committee, held public workshops, published a series of email newsletters, and posted online surveys. In addition, your city team has hosted additional meetings and coffees and taken advantage of other community events, such as the IB Expo and Farmer's Market to share project news and get input. This slide highlights some of the formal meetings that have been held. Sea level rise response has been one of the core topics of discussion and was the focus of public concern at the joint session held on November 14th of last year. After that meeting, additional meetings were held with concerned citizens, which led to significant edits to the draft policies. First of all, managed retreat was more clearly stated as a non-viable strategy in this local coastal program general plan update. A more recent edit is to focus on triggers that would result in a more in-depth course of analysis and development of response strategies rather than specific actions. We are also increasing the focus on monitoring, including committing to a community-based monitoring and input component as a formal part of the process. Edits that have been previously occurred are to remove set limits on the economic lifetime of infrastructure. From the start, we heard, and the plan reflects, the community's desire to limit measures to the 20, 10 to 20 year timeline of this LCP update. Community input was also critical in verifying coastal access points that should be preserved now and into the future. The local coastal program land use and design components that were the most of most interest to the community and where we use community input to help shape the draft as well as to effect edits include strengthening community character policies, balancing the growth of visitor serving and land uses with community character, maintaining height limits, maintaining a small walkable beach town character, 
looking for um, validating support for Bayfront activation and the component of proposing a rezone to the salt pond site to reflect the long-term use of the property as restored wetlands open space. Regarding topics related to conservation and ecotourism, throughout, out, throughout outreach, we learned the importance of balancing the environment, economy, and community goals because they are deeply intertwined and mutually dependent on each other for a success. That means that the plan needs to support thoughtful expansion of tourism and ecotourism opportunities in a way that respects yet updates the city's big picture goals. We heard loud and clear how important it is to fix water quality problems, including polluted discharges originating from Mexico. Citizens emphasize the need to enforce environmental standards and for all levels of government to work on solutions. The Climate Action Plan has been highlighted at multiple public meetings and events and was the subject of a survey monkey poll. Through this input, we learned that the community wants us to focus on feasible measures to remove re requirements such as the energy audit, to recognize blue carbon, which is talking about how wetlands can use to help capture carbon as a means to capture carbon that the city uh, may be able to get credit for in the future, to continue collaboration with others, and to really focus on designing a program that meets local vision and goals. The local coastal program land use and zoning components included looking at recommendations that were made by the city's ad hoc committee. As a result of this committee's past work and input at local coastal program update meetings, policies were drafted for the general plan and specific criteria has been added to the zoning ordinance. We'll cover those details in a few minutes. We were appreciative of the public's time and participation at the community events. Here, were, here are a few images from the first joint session. Here are some examples of displays and exhibits used to gather public input at steering and stakeholder committee meetings. Here's some uh, images from the first workshop that was held and the second workshop that was held where we reconvened at the farmer's market with a booth to, in order to engage people that may not have otherwise been aware of the program. Now I'm gonna take a few minutes to just highlight a few of the major pieces of the program, starting with the general plan. The overall vision of the general plan is to retain Imperial Beach's small beach town character and the importance of a natural environment, maintaining the city's theme of being classic Southern California. A cross-cutting theme throughout the general plan is a focus on environment, economy, and community to preserve the city's desired character while looking to the future and to maintain the city's environmental leadership and stewardship. Throughout all elements, we pursue a systems approach looking for shared responsibility to address complex problems. A few of the key components covered in the plan are sea level rise, resiliency, a focus on visitors and ecotourism, the importance of water quality, maintaining coastal access, promoting sustainability, addressing climate change, including a complete streets policy, looking at new innovations for mobility, addressing environmental justice as required by state law, and to have a new focus on healthy communities, we were fortunate to partner with UC San Diego and the County of San Diego to put some cutting edge policies relating community health into the general plan. Now we'll be talking about the sea level rise component of our LCP update. Well, we will be looking to move beyond the Imperial Beach sea level rise study, which we conducted, and then actually look at real adaptation strategies that we're looking into the future. There are many things that we have done in the city that we'll be monitoring and assessing into the future. Uh, some of these include existing conventional shoreline protections. 
In addition, we have done numerous beach nourishment projects and we'll be looking to do additional ones into the future. And we'll be monitoring the long-term uh, resilience of beach nourishment projects. In addition, we have very good partnerships with the Tijuana Estuary, and there's a very fine example of living shorelines, which is a good example of what we could, could implement in the north of our city. In areas where there's low line, the city has already installed stormwater pumps, such as Seacoast and Palm. In the future, it is possible we'll be looking at other areas of the city where stormwater pump stations may be necessary to address flooding concerns. And wherever possible in the city, we're implementing what is called green streets. These are ways to be able to retain and store stormwater along with existing city right away. This will help reduce flooding downstream. One good example of a green street project is the two miles of new alleys that the city recently installed all throughout the city. The city installed stormwater retention under these permeable alleys. In addition, there's a lot of properties that are redeveloping all throughout the city. These new properties that are redeveloped are required to capture and store stormwater as part of new building codes. And finally, we'll be talking about the Pillar Beach Boulevard Enhancement Project, which is currently under construction. This project implements a lot of the green street elements and complete streets policies that we're updating in the plan. The implementation plan is a method of carrying out the local coastal program and general plan. Within the implementation plan, there are various components such as the zoning ordinance, zoning maps, coastal permit requirements, and permit procedures, including appeals and any exclusions. With regard to the zoning ordinance, there are different zones with different uses, such as residential, commercial, public facilities, mixed use, open space, and urban reserve. Also within the, the zoning ordinance, it includes setbacks, heights, parking, open space, et cetera. Within recent years, there have been various matters to address regarding zoning, some of which have already taken place, such as requiring ground floor active commercial uses within the commercial zones, and also addressing any residential standards for exclusively residential projects within the mixed use zones. Other areas that have been discussed uh, at the ad hoc committee meetings included building height requirements, permitted uses, conditional use permit incentives, and market viability. Following a community survey and outreach meetings, the primary zoning amendments include the addition of a permitted use with a conditional use permit. This allows for uses not identified in underlying residential zones to be proposed as long as any project meets the objective of the zone. The promise, process would encourage dialogue and collaboration among any applicant and the neighborhood. The next item will be the modification of the CMU2 conditional use permit incentive requirements for projects proposing a height or density increase. The changes would be to require additional standards to increase neighborhood compatibility and community benefit. Following that, any project that would require or request a parking reduction, a site-specific parking study would be required for the project. In addition, there would be some new landscape requirements that would require new trees for projects, which is consistent with a 1986 resolution that was adopted by the City Council. In addition to these key areas, there have been other clerical and clarifying changes which you could view at the zoning table. Other key implementation plan items include a new user's guide, which is a new document that increases the understanding of the LCP, how it's implemented, and it also provides the permit procedure process and also provides a flow chart to help uh, better understand the process for discretionary projects. There's also a new sea level rise checklist, which is a tool to guide LCP implementation and increase resiliency. It relies on monitoring, public input, collaboration, evaluation, and site-specific selection of measures over time. There's also an update to the zoning map, which would rezone Salt Pond 10A to open space to better fit the sensitive habitat and further the city's ongoing commitment to wetlands protections. To fully successfully implement the plan, it would require ongoing collaboration with all levels of government, this would include participation on Sandai committees, 
collaboration with the Port District, the Navy, the county and local cities, also state and federal agencies, and also private and nonprofit sectors and SDG&E and other utility companies. The Resilient IB Local Coastal Program project also includes preparation of a climate action plan. The purpose of the climate action plan is to reduce greenhouse gas emissions consistent with state climate targets. We're also seeking to support the city's long-term economic development, preserve and enhance the environment, and reinforce community character. The overall purpose of the plan is to improve community resilience and ability to adapt to climate change impacts. This slide shows the source of existing emissions within the city. At 57%, on-road transportation is the largest source of emissions, followed by electricity use at 23%. The Climate Action Plan is designed to promote, provide measures that will reduce the emissions consistent with state goals. The vast majority of emissions reductions will be achieved, achieved through existing state and federal efforts. The CAP measures are locally achievable actions that the city will take to close the remaining gap, called the local gap. The city will monitor the effectiveness of these local measures to ensure they are performing well and the city remains on track to meet the 2030 target. If measures are not on track to achieve their intended reductions, the city will adjust them or add additional measures as needed. Another important reason for preparing a climate action plan is to maintain grant eligibility to fund projects that the city needs. And uh, that concludes our presentation on this project. Uh, from this point on, uh, we will continue our efforts to coordinate with Coastal Commission staff soliciting their comments and input. Uh, we have May 15th as the deadline to have comments from the public on the draft negative declaration, the draft LCP climate action plan documents prior to uh, the commencement of hearings. May 13th, we have it scheduled for our Title Ends Advisory Committee. May 16th, we have it scheduled for the Design Review Board. And on May 20th, we have the Parks and Recreation Committee uh, at their meeting to obtain their input as well. We anticipate uh, June 19th as the City Council meeting where action would be taken on the LCP, the Climate Action Plan, the environmental document, and the first reading of the uh, implementation plan. Uh, at the July 17th City Council meeting, we anticipate conducting the second reading of the implementation plan ordinance. After the conclusion of that action, we will be transmitting these LCP documents to the Coast Commission for their certification. And then we will be able to close out the LCP grant that we obtained from the Coast Commission. Our thanks to our consultant AECOM for their tremendous work on this project. And thank you, audience, for attending and providing input for this project.